So in this example, we will design a two bit counter using finite state machines. Okay. So in this two bit counter, we will have a reset input to initialize our counter to zero and we will have two bit counter output. Okay. So in a way, I have a, a finite state machine with two bit counter. So I will have a clock signal and a reset signal here and I will have a two bit output. Let's call this Y. Okay. So how does this counter will work? So we have this clock signal, right? Let's say we are using the rising edge and this is my clock. And then I will also have a reset signal. Let's say this is an active high reset. So initially it is zero, let's say, and it will be high for some times it will be low assume this is a synchronous reset okay and then we will have our output y so initially i may not know what is my output until the reset okay so this is my output y and i don't know what is the value until here because i haven't resetted my circuit but after i got a reset here why because my flip-flops are working on the rising edge so they are positive edge triggered and then I will initialize my state to be zero here. So this will be zero and on the next clock edge then my output will be one. It is counting, right? So this is a counter and on the next clock edge my value will be two. On the next edge it will change to three and on this edge it will go back to zero right because a counter is a two bit counter it will count from zero to three and then it will go back to zero and then it will count again so this is what we are trying to do okay so in this case if i look at this timing diagram what do i see i have four different states right i can draw my state diagram so this is my s0 and i will say this is zero zero and I have a state of S1, 0, 1. I have a state of S2, 1, 0. And another state, S3, 1, 1. Right, so I have an input of reset. If reset, I will just show this like this, okay? So this is my reset signal. If there is a reset, I will go to S0 state, right? This is coming from any state, right? I could have just show it like this as well. And this one. Right, so if the set is 1, I just go to S00 and my output will be also Y is 0, right? So this is the only input I have for all the other cases. So if I am in S0, the next clock cycle I will go to S1, right? So there is no condition on this one, right? So in the next clock cycle, I will go to S1. And if I am in S1, the next clock cycle, I will go to S2. And then here I have an output of, so in this case, actually, this is a Moore machine and my outputs is only depends on my states. And in this case, instead of writing my states number here, so this is a Moore machine and my states will also give my outputs. So in this case, my output will be zero, one. Okay. So in each state, I have an output and I will just write it here. In S0, I will have my output 00. S1, my output will be 01. In S2, my output will be 10. Actually, in this case, just for this example, my output is equal to my current state. Okay, Y will be 11. So then since this is a Moore state machine, I show my outputs inside the states okay so in the move we show the output inside the states so if i am in s2 i will be going to s3 so next clock cycle and if i am in s3 i will be going to s0 now we have found the state diagram for our two bit counter with reset signal to make our state diagram simpler i will just show the reset signal going to s0 state only so this is a much simpler diagram now let's design our circuit for this two bit counter i will design this two bit counter in two different ways so in the first way we will assume the flip flops do not have a reset input so in this case we will treat the reset signal explicitly as input 
In the second way, we will assume our flip-flops have a reset input. So reset is handled by the flip-flops automatically. So in this case, we will not consider reset as an input to our circuit. So the second approach is much simpler while the first way is more complex. So in the second case, the reset input will go directly to the flip-flop, which will make our circuit much simpler. Now let's design our circuit using the first way. So in this case, we don't have a reset signal going to do our flip-flop. So in this case, we have four states. So we need two flip-flops. Assume we will be using Q1 and Q0 to store our states. Let's draw our state table. So in this case, we have this reset signal as an explicit input to our circuit. So let's write the eight possibilities. So assume we are using a positive edge triggered flip-flop. If the reset is zero and my current state is zero, zero, on the rising edge of the clock, my next state will be zero, one. If my present state is zero, one and reset is zero, on the rising edge of the clock, my next state will be one, zero. Similarly, if I am in state S2, my next state will be S3. And if I am in S3, my next state will be zero, zero. So if the reset is one, right, it doesn't matter which set I am at, my next state will be zero, zero. Of course, this is also on the rising edge of the clock. So in this case, we are designing a Moore finite state machine. So my output Y is directly equal to my present state. So Y1 T is equal to Q1 T and Y0 T equal to Q0 T. Now let's find out our next state logic. So we need to consider these two rows for Q1 T plus one. In this case, we can directly write Q1 T plus one. So from the state table, you can see Q1 T plus one is equal to reset not and Q1 T XOR Q0 T, right? So this is the XOR operation here. Let's write Q0 T plus one. In this case, a simplification is possible. So I will be drawing the Carnot map here. So I have one here and one here. So I can make a group here. So from here I can write Q0 T plus one is equal to reset not and Q0 not. So since we had next state equations, then we can draw our schematic. So in this case, we have two flip-flops. Let's say this is my Q0, this is my Q1. So my outputs are directly connected to my present state. So this is Y0, this is Y1. So for the next state logic for Q0, we need to end the not of Q0 with reset not. Similarly, we will have reset not ended with XOR of Q0 T and Q1 T. So this is our circuit for the two bit counter with reset input. So in this case, these flip flops do not have a reset signal. Now let's design the same circuit using the second method. So I will be using the first method to show the simplifications. So in this case, we will have the reset signal directly connected to the flip flops. So we will be removing these resets here. Let's change the title to second way and we need to include our reset here. So on the state table, we can also remove the reset. So we will have only four possibilities. We can also remove the resets from the state equations. From the state table, it is easy to see the next state of Q0. It is equal to Q0 naught, so we may not need this Carnot map either. So now, by using the reset signal in the flip-flop, we were able to simplify our two-bit counter with reset signal. It is much more simpler compared to the first way. Now let's design the same two-bit counter in a third way. In this case, we will be using adders for next state logic. So if you look at the state operations, what is happening? We have Q1 T and Q0 T. And at each clock cycle, we are adding one to our present state and we are getting our next state. Since this is simply an add operation, we can just use a two bit parallel adder for our next state logic. So let's draw our two bit parallel adder. So we have a carry in here and we have our inputs here and we have S0 and S1. 
So we will still have our flip flops here. We will directly connect S0 to Q0 and S1 to Q1. So for carrying, I will be putting 0. So I will be connecting Q0T to A0 and Q1T to A1. For B0, I will be putting a 1 here and I will be putting a 0 for the B1. So basically what I did, I took Q0T from here and I connected to here, Q1T from here and I connected to here. And I took this one, I connected to the B0 input of the adder and I took this 0 and I connected to B1 input of the adder. Now as you see we have our next state logic here. So you can verify this circuit is working correctly. You just put some current states and then you verify the next state will be what we are expecting. So this was another way of designing this 2-bit counter with reset signal using 2-bit parallel adder.